Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian in Arlington, Virginia, where we're covering the 2017 Surface Navy Association's annual conference and trade show. Uh, our coverage uh, of this trade show is sponsored by Raytheon, and we have with us Ron Jenkins of Raytheon, who is uh, the director for Precision standoff strike at uh, at Raytheon and we've also got Gary Holst uh, who is uh, the senior director for naval surface warfare at Kongsberg's US subsidiary I'm, I'm glad I'm glad I got uh, I got that both out because the, they're both both mouthfuls and both of you guys are retired US Navy uh, US Navy captains uh, I want to start with uh, with you Ron um, obviously the United States Navy um, has a requirement now for an over-the-horizon weapon to increase the lethality of uh, sort of the block 2 version of the littoral combat ship the frigate version of the ship um, you know and the US Navy and Admiral uh, Tom Roden uh, the the surf or the commander of uh, US Naval surface uh, warfare uh, surface forces has talked about distributed lethality which has been his um, one of his signature uh, initiatives and obviously that's the title of this year's show um, where does this weapon come into that you know in this in this competition what are the attributes of it and why do you guys think that this is the right solution for the Navy well the distributed lethality strategy that the US Navy is is working on right now is is critical to the future war fighting for the US Navy so if it floats it fights really makes sense and what Admiral Roden would like to see is increased offensive capabilities across the fleet uh, across the world uh, and, and to really distribute lethality so the NSM brings that operational distributed lethality to the fleet today. This is a weapon that's ready today, ready now, operational, fully gone through its testing. is not an op not a, a, a test article. It's in the in the Norwegian fleet. It's uh, ashore as a coastal defense weapon for Poland. It's ready now, and I'll just tell you that that's that's the moniker for NSM and distributed lethality. This makes distributed lethality a reality. And NSM obviously is the Naval Naval Strike Missile, so that's a very, very imaginative uh, <laughs> acronym you guys have. Gary, what are some of the capabilities of the weapon? Um, obviously the competitors in this, Boeing has um, uh, you know, the extended range harpoon, obviously playing on the, uh, the, the fact that the harpoon has been in inventory for a long time. Obviously it's an evolved version of the weapon. Uh, Lockheed is in the competition as well with the LRASM. What are the capabilities that this weapon brings that differentiates you guys from your competitors? Well, Ron addressed distributed lethality, and what I'll touch on real quickly is lethality of NSM itself. So in any war or any hunting expedition, you want to hit the target that you shoot at or the one that you intend to hit. Never more important than in naval surface warfare, the only uh, difference from hunting is this target is shooting back at you in most cases. So the things that we bring are a design philosophy that blends capabilities and attributes across the mission profile. So while it may be distributed in number of ships or a single ship firing from different axes, each one of these missiles provides an unsurpassed level of survivability. We do that by low observable design technologies, the flight profile, which is extraordinarily low to delay detection, and then as we anticipate encountering defenses from a heavily defended target, the missile has uh, abilities and capabilities that it will counter each of those defenses, whether they be long-range major caliber guns, surface-to-air missiles, or a close-in weapon system in endgame. Uh, the real heart of the missile, though, is autonomous target recognition. So when this missile is fired, you can provide it with a template of the ship by class that you want it to hit, along with an associated aim point. And if it gets to a group of ships where your target is trying to hide or is being defended by uh, contemporaries that are in company with them, it will seek out and attack that target and that target only. So it brings a number of rules of engagement advantages, both to uh, avoiding friendlies or neutrals and to hitting the high value target in an adversary sag. Um, as you're looking at the performance envelope, you know, what, what size warhead are we talking about and what sort of range are you guys reaching out to? Well, it, the, the requirement is for over the horizon. So it, it depends on what your high to eye is and where the horizon is. But uh, we're talking about a missile that can go you know, uh, in, in excess of 100 nautical miles. Is, is the is the watchword for that. So uh, as far as the warhead goes, that's something we probably won't talk about right here in front of the camera. But uh, believe me, no, it, no, it, do, it, do. It, it's it's the lethality that 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 you need uh, against a surface target at right. sea. 
And let me tell you to cost. I mean, obviously cost is an important factor for everybody in this game. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a budget increase, or at least that's the anticipation, but, but even the VCNO, uh, Admiral Bill Moran yesterday said that he doesn't expect that much more money so that, so that there will still be financial pressures. Um, you know, um, from, you know, how are you guys reducing cost and, and what's your approach because, you know, the folks are also looking at through life, for example, uh, what the launchers and how different the launchers are. How are you guys addressing some of those things to make sure that this fits into, for example, existing launchers and things like that to try to reduce, reduce the overall cost of ownership and acquisition? There's, we're always in a cost constrained environment. We understand that. But what we bring is uh, what we consider to be the world's most advanced anti-shipping cruise missile to the world's largest producer of missiles. And there's a lot of economies of scale that we can get through supply chain and uh, reduced cost. So uh, right off the bat, we're operating at a, uh, a reduced cost from what we're accustomed to. Secondly, uh, cost per kill is really the name of the game. Uh, we hear that a lot in directed energy weapons. You hear it sparingly in um, conventional, more conventional weapons. Uh, cost per kill, uh, the survivability analyses that we have done and continue to perform, we believe that this is a weapon that will certainly be competitive in any cost consideration. And when it comes to, do you have anything to add on that one, Ron? No, I, I, he, he hit it right on the, on the nose. <laughs> he he, he mean, did. You're very good at this. Uh, but but he's, he's talking about the economies of scale. When you're talking about uh, the two companies working together on the multitude of programs that we have and the multitude of suppliers, we're taking advantage of that. And um, tell me a little bit, how many do you notionally think, how many naval strike missiles can you put on an LCS you know, effectively? What, what's the number you guys are shooting for? It depends. Uh, when the um, the final RFP comes out, we'll perhaps have a, a little bit better. But all of the numbers that have been discussed with us, uh, we could exceed based on space weight power and cooling margins. So uh, the unit of issue today in uh, ships that we have outfitted throughout the world is uh, eight per ship. We can certainly go above that. Great, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks very much for joining us, and and best of luck on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks.